everyone, welcome to today's tutorial where we're going to make a playful quilt. Uh, the quilt is similar to snakes and ladders uh, where you have ladders going up and snakes going down. In this case we're just going to use uh, construction trucks and uh, little arrows to, to take us through, through the game. It's a playful game kids can use to uh, with their little cars, driving through all the numbers as they play, but in our 10th week we will um, also do the dice and the, the play discs that we're going to use. Um, in this tutorial for our first week we're going to do um, the first row. Each row will consist of eight blocks uh, like you can see here. This is one, one strip. The files comes in 4x4 and 5x7 hoop sizes. Uh, so it totally depends on what size you want. If you're doing the 4x4 hoop um, blocks, you will end up with a quilt of about 900 by 1 meter. Um, that is around about uh, 36 by 40 inches in size. It does depend on the width of the sashing and the binding you will, you will add at the end. If you're doing the 5x5 hoop blocks, you will end up with a quilt of 1.1 meter by 1.2 meters or 44 by 48 inch in size again depending on the width of your binding and your sashing. The whole quilt consists out of eight blocks in a row and we're going to have nine rows. So that's a total of 72 blocks in the set. The dice and play pieces that will be after the quilt is completed. Now first of all let's see uh, what you will need to, to make this quilt. First of all um, you need fabric for the front of the blocks. So this is a block I've, I've stitched. So your front fabric that, that you're going to, to stitch your, your picture on. I'm just using a 100% cotton linen. This is Perkay linen. Um, it's not a very thick linen so, but it all depends on what you want to use. You can use a quilter's cotton as well. Um, even if you really want to you can use scuba. Uh, but as it's a, a game that's going to be used quite a lot on the floor with kids, scuba tends to um, pucker over time, you know, with little um, leaks and kinks that it gets in. So cotton is very um, versatile and it's very safe for kids as well. So I recommend using 100% cotton for this kiddies quilt. Batting. Um, I'm using this thin polyester batting. It's a very low loft batting. You can use cotton batting, anything that you prefer using, but do not use a very thick batting. We don't want a very bulky quilt. Uh, we just need it to, to have a little bit of body uh, for the background textures to, to show, but not a very high loft quilt, as it's a play quilt, and they're going to drive over it with their little cars, and such you don't need it to be bulky at all. So use a thin um, batting. Um, I think many of you use pill and quilters, low um, touch, low loft polyester batting, uh, so that is perfect to use. By all means, you don't need to use a specific brand. The brand I use, I actually buy big rolls of, so it's a, it's a China import batting, so it's not a brand name at all. So whatever you find easy to work with and works for you, uh, that's great. Uh, just go ahead. Then you need fabric for your backing. Um, after we've completed, stitched uh, all the blocks together, like you see here, the, this is one row. Then we will add one large piece of background fabric and then we're going to stitch in the ditch around all the blocks. So on the back it will look like um, little squares and on the front you will have your, your print. Type of fabric you can use for your back, 100% cotton as well. I'm going to use in fact 100% cotton for the binding, for the sashing for the front and the back on this wall. Decide on your colors that you want to use. For the go sign, I'm going to use this green. Uh, for my back, I'm going to use black. For the sashing, I'm going to use this yellow stripes, yellow and white. So decide on what fabric you want to use for what section of your quilt. Um, I do recommend that you pre-cut all your fabrics before you get started, so cut all your batting in the sizes you want, cut your front fabric, do not cut your back fabric, your sashing or your binding yet as we will do that um, when, when it's needed. So let's get started on, on doing um, the first block um, in this set. 
Um, I will do two blocks to show you two different methods. Um, one method I'm going to, to show you is how to hoop everything together if you prefer to hoop. And the second method is how to float. In the first method you will end up with batting in your seam allowance and with the second floating method you will end up with no batting in your seam allowance. So it all just depends on what your preference is. Your hoop, I'm going to do the 5x5 five five inch blocks. So we, in this case we're going to hoop everything together that we need. I'm going to take one layer of my cutaway stabilizer. I've cut my batting a little bit smaller so that it doesn't come into the sides of the hoop just to make it uh, so that it's not as bulky and difficult to hoop you don't stretch your, your hoop out of proportion so I've just cut that a little bit smaller you can add that in the center and then we are going to add our piece of fabric on top all of the, the cutaway and your fabric is a tad larger than your hoop as you can see with your first method where we hoop everything together, you will use a little bit more fabric um, than with the second method. So if you want to save on fabric as well, um, then I will recommend the second method, which will be floating. Now, um, I do like to use 505 spray between the layers to minimize um, any movement that might occur. So just lightly spray. If you're not familiar with 505, uh, it's a temporary adhesive, spray adhesive specifically for um, textile. It won't damage your machine and it's not very sticky. It removes easily and wash away clear, so it's very safe to use. So just press down your batting. Then you can spray a little bit again. Not much, you only need a little. And add your fabric on top. Just smooth that out. And now we can hoop everything together. And just press together. You can secure it a little bit more on the sides. Make sure it's pressed in all around. And we're ready to go to the embroidery machine. We're going to do this go block so I can show you same time how to do your the your first applique for those very new to applique. Uh, the, the go and the stop signs are the only two applique designs in the set. The rest is all straightforward embroidery. Uh, but I will do one of these blocks and then for the second method I'm going to do that block so that you can see how to do applique and how to proceed if there is no applique on the design. So for our first stitch out I'm using the hoop method. Just to refresh again you will have batting in your seam allowance doing this method. I stitched the first step in a green just so you can see what the color looks like. However, you will use um, this color same as your fabric is. So you would use a white for your first step. Uh, there's two steps in the beginning. The first step um, is this outline and then there's another step that's an outline again but it's a little bit of offset. That is to make provision for the second method where you don't want batting in your seam allowance. So you can just go ahead and stitch the second step as well. Uh, because we're doing this, this method, we just actually ignore uh, one of the first two steps. So you can either skip past the first one and just do the second one, or you can go ahead and just stitch both. It just depends on what you want to do. I'll be back after the second step is done. the first two steps completed. You see it's two offset lines. Again I'm using the green just so you can see it on camera but you will match with your fabric. You can now go ahead and stitch the lace fill that's in the background. Your quilting effect. Again I'm going to do it in green just for more visibility.
background stitching just finished as you can see now if this was the very first block in the row that is where you will stop so your first block is just a blank block reason I left it blank is so that you can write a message on top with love from granny or uh, your son's name or wherever the quilt is for any special message that you want to add on here you can even add another picture if you want so if you're doing the first block and you get to that stage um, you can now add your text on top so you will load another design to your machine and you will just stitch um, the wording or uh, the different design on top if you'd like we're actually doing this file this the go sign so I'm going to show you now how to do the applique. So we're going to do the next step in, in the Go file, which will be an outline of your hexagon. Finish stitching the next step, which is the hexagon outline. Applique designs generally have three steps. It's normally just an outline to show you where to place your fabric. Your second step is a tuck down step, and then you have your satin step to finish off the raw edges. I've already cut my little piece that I'm going to use for uh, the applique. So I'm just going to add a little bit of fiber fast spray to the center of, of the hexagon and I'm going to lay my fabric over the shape. I'm now going to go back and stitch the tack down stitch. The zigzag step completed, as you can see. I'm now going to use my scissors. I'm using, everybody asks me what scissors I use, so I'll just explain again. Um, these are Frawley's curved handle scissors. You can see it's got a unique curve to it. It's got a very long curved snout, slightly curved. So it, you can get very, very close to, to, your stitch, to your stitches and cut away quite cleanly. I've used these uh, for many, many years so they don't go blunt easily. So it's, it's really worth getting these. So again, it's Frawley's. It's a German make um, scissors and you can get it at, at many of your um, sewing stores or you can buy online as well. So just cut your fabric away as close to the stitches as possible. Try not to pull on the fabric as you cut so you don't fray it at, if, if it's a fabric that frays easily. So just lift and go. Push your scissors right next to the stitches and then just cut pieces. And I'll show you a close up of how close to the stitches I actually get. You can see it's very, very close to the stitches and it goes fairly quickly as well. We're now going to go back to the embroidery machine and I'm going to stitch uh, the green outline that's the satin to finish off this raw edge of my, my um, panel. The satin just finished, you can see it's beautifully finished all around and this is basic applique, so again just to refresh applique has three steps, it's got a run stitch to show you where to place your fabric, then you place your fabric, then you have a tack down stitch to secure that fabric in, in the spot and then you cut away after the zigzag is stitched and then you do this satin to finish off the raw edge. Now going to go ahead and stitch the word go and the white line around and then we're done with this block I'll show you how to trim. The file is now complete so you're going to remove it from the hoop. You can give it a nice iron on both sides just to flatten it up a little bit. Ironing also uh, not only gives you a neater finish after you stitched, but it also, uh, because there's polyester in the uh, thread, uh, the minute you iron it, the stitches tend to pull tighter. Just give it a good iron to make everything lie nice and flat and neat without any wrinkles. We're now ready to cut away um, the edge. Uh, because we hooped, you can see this, your batting in your seam allowance, like I said before. So you're going to pull your front fabric backwards and we want to trim away first of all the backing so you only have your front fabric. I'm using a rotary cutter and my ruler. And I'm just going to trim away bulk of the batting Be 
careful that you don't cut so close that you actually cut your front fabric. Now you can open it up again. If you feel it's wrinkled, just iron it quickly. And we're then going to give it a about an inch um, seam allowance. You can always trim it away if it's too, too bulky later on, but you can't put back if you cut too much. So just give it about a, a one inch, or if you feel more comfortable with a two inch, then you do a two inch um, edge from the side. Just trim all your blocks neatly. And you're all done and you can set it aside now until we've uh, finished our next block and then I'll show you how to, to assemble the blocks to one another. We're now going to go ahead and stitch um, the next block which is block number one uh, using the method where the batting is pre-cut so there is no batting in your seam allowance. Same as before, you're going to hoop your cutaway, but you're not going to cut uh, to hoop your, your fabric or your batting, you're just going to hoop your, bat, your backing at this stage. I'm now going to take the fold uh, to the embroidery machine and I'm going to cut the first step directly onto my stabilizer, which will be my outline. I've now stitched my first step directly onto my stabilizer. As you can see there in yellow. I'm now going to add my batting. This step just shows you where to place your batting. So I'm just going to lightly spray my 5 5 and I'm going to float my batting on top making sure that that outline is fully covered. I'm now taking it back to the embroidery machine and stitching the next outline step. After the batting was tacked down you can take your scissors and cut close to the batting as to the stitches as possible you just cut away the extra batting now to continue with the rest of the design you're going to add your fabric now you can see I've cut a smaller piece of fabric you don't need a full hoop size so that's why I said previously that you are using a, a less fabric using this method so I'm just going to spray with my fiber pass spray all around this time I'm spraying a little bit more because I'm floating I need to make sure that it's nice and secure and I'm just going to smooth it out. You can if you want to use pins just make sure that it's well out of the way of, of your stitch area it will stitch where the batting is underneath but if you want to, to add some extra pins around the edge you are more welcome to do so. So you can now take it back to the machine and you can complete the rest of the design. There's no applique on, on this uh, next block so you can see you're going to finish your background quilting you're going to finish these two colors of the gravel and you're going to finish the number one I'll be back to show you what it looks like and how to remove from the hoop and then we're going to trim the block and then I'll show you how to start assembling your row. Our number one block just completed as you can see we're now going to remove it from the hoop In this case we don't have any batting, like you can see it's clean between the layers. I'm just going to give it an eye and then we can trim it. Again I'm going to trim about an inch from the sides using my rotary trimmer. Now you can go ahead and complete all your blocks in the same fashion, depending if you want your batting in the, in the seam allowance or if you do not want it in the seam allowance, it's all depending on you. Both ways uh, will give you great results. Uh, to assemble your, your blocks together, you will need some pins. Now what I do suggest to line it up, because we've got patterns like you can see on this one for example that really need to match where the wheels are and where the body parts are so that it matches everywhere perfectly. Now my tip for this is you're going to place your panels the right sides together that you want to join. Just make sure that your wording 
is uh, um, upright, so we want the number one on top in this case, then push your pin through the corner of your, of your design. Make sure that it's on the corner at the top, then push the pin through the other block, the corner as well. If you wiggle it so it's at a 90 degree angle, it should align perfectly. You can do the same with the bottom. So I'm going to push a pin through the top layer and then I'm going to push my pin through the bottom block. I'm going to wiggle it to make sure that it aligns on both of these and then I'm going to bring my pin down for the top one and for this one I'm going to bring my pin up. Do not bring your pin to the side. So in other words, if you push through your pins for both, do not bring it to the side either way. The minute you do that, you're actually pushing the one block away from the other one. So you just want to align it perfectly that way. So you can either push up or you can pu push your pin down along the line you're going to stitch. Now when you stitch these blocks, you're going to do a straight stitch just on the inside of the most um, outer stitching that you can see here on, the, on that outline stitch. So just, just, just on the, on the left hand side of that, you're going to place your straight stitches all, all to the bottom. I'm quickly going to do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. After you stitched together all your blocks that you've just completed, that's block up until a block six, you will have one long strip that which will be your first row of your quilt. Next week we will do the second row. If there's any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below and we'll address them in the second video. I hope you enjoyed your first lesson for this quilt along project. Stay tuned for a list of supplies to follow just after this. Thank you so much for watching. See you all next week.